My name is Bob Dierig. I'm the Director of Archives and Special Collections here at Art Center. I want to welcome you all to this talk, A Dreamer in a Hollywood Hotel, a presentation by Art Center alum and faculty member Penny Wolin on her fantastic new book, Guest Register. Penny Wolin is the author of three monographs of documentary photography. Her photographs are in the collections of the Smithsonian American Art Museum, the New York Public Library, Harvard University, and the Layton Art Collection at Milwaukee Art Museum. She has exhibited solo at the Smithsonian National Museum of American History and is the recipient of grants from the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Endowment for the Humanities and awarded a fellowship to the American Film Institute. She was a contract photographer for Life magazine and her editorial portraits of actors, activists, thinkers, and musicians have appeared in Vanity Fair, Rolling Stone, and the New York Times. She is an alumna of Art Center's Photography and Imaging Department and is currently a professor in the Graphic Design Department. Following uh, Penny's talk, we'll invite to this stage Greg Lindy and Barry Munger, who both collaborated on the book for a short discussion. This work, Guest Register, is, is really fascinating. I love this book. Uh, it's a body of work that Penny created as a student here at Art Center, and it's very much of a specific time and place. Uh, residents of the St. Francis Hotel in Hollywood, California, 1975. And this can be seen in the photos of the residents in their rooms, the fashion, some of their belongings. And yet, this work is also timeless. She writes in the book about wanderers and dreamers, which we see in the pages. And we observe the range of emotions, expressions, the looks in their eyes. And this is what makes the work so timeless to me. I also see Penny in the work, and not only in her self-portrait as a resident of the St. Francis Hotel, but also in her skills as a photographer, her curiosity, and her compassion. Help me in welcoming to the stage Penny Wolin. Thank you for uh, braving the Saturday traffic, my God, uh, uh, and coming to Art Center. Uh, I know that you, some places you can't get here from there, but you're here, and um, it, it's a lovely auditorium, and it's lovely to see all of you. Uh, and thank you, Bob. This was Bob's idea, and he invited me to do that, to do this, and so he, uh, thank, thank you very much. I'm good? We're all good? Yep, I think so. Okay, so, uh, well, this is me. Uh, and I'm still having issues with my hair. So because Hollywood is part myth, uh, uh, lots of hope and dream and, and not bound by time, we're going to float around the book today, kind of going back and forth. May 26th, 1975. Penny. Your photo catalog of the St. Francis Hotel is a delicate and definitive realization of a home for those who pretend they are homeless. Your sensitivity and taste are so evident in your work that the barbarians are likely to get you in the future. If so, there is a room here for you, too. Signed, Room 540 and Family. This is the writer in room 540, the penthouse. He wrote this in one of several actual old hotel ledgers that he had rescued from the trash. He knew I was coming to give him a print for letting me photograph him, and he met me at the door with this signed ledger. This inscription has been my reminder for 48 years, a reminder to get back up when the barbarians knock you down, a reminder to stay true to your original vision, and a reminder to believe in myself. I began to use the camera when I was 10 years old in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, it was an extra one left over from my brother's bar mitzvah, gift trove. So, I became your standard nice Jewish American cowgirl hippie with a camera. And then 
I became a rodeo photographer for the largest rodeo in the world, Cheyenne Frontier Days. I was still a teenager then. I learned about making quick decisions that would keep me safe while I met photographers and journalists from all over the world. They encouraged me to go to LA. And after three seasons covering the rodeo, which I say the mud and the blood and the beer, and just out of high school, I was ready to bust out of the gate. That rodeo prepared me for Art Center, who took a passionate yet undisciplined artist and made me a professional photographer. This is the first essay of the book, and I wrote this in 1975. The St. Francis isn't the dirtiest, the cheapest, or even the most bottomed out hotel on Hollywood Boulevard. In the early days of Hollywood, it was a nice hotel, one of the better places to stay in the city. The days of Hollywood are gone now, but some of what remains and more are staying in the hotel. Stuntmen who were never pensioned for their injuries, child actors whose parents squandered away their money, drunks who would like to lay down on the street and die, but it is illegal, they are all at the hotel. Middle-aged men divorced from their families, old people who want more independence than a rest home or can't afford one, people who are considered on the fringes of acceptance by society, and young people in search of a future. Me, they too are at the hotel. People live in this hotel, walking, talking, feeling people. They all have pasts where they didn't live in the hotel, and they all have reasons for living there now. Some have reasons to move on, and some have reasons to stay. We all live at some hotel. Some of us may go to Encino to escape it, but that is no more effective than pulling your blind down to escape your neighbor's turned up radio. We are all here now. We all make decisions, we all laugh and love and feel, and we all end up somewhere. Think of that the next time you walk past an old hotel. Room 105 was the first session uh, that I booked. And it turned out, by the way I designed the original portfolio, that it was the first session in the book because that was the first room number. We had an early morning appointment. However, upon my arrival, I was met by the police and my stuntman had already been removed. Regardless, a photographer always has to bring home the images they were sent to get. I went about my task, I didn't ask any questions, and I made images of what there was. I've often wondered about him, about this image that wasn't exactly meant to be the way I thought it would happen. Room 208 invited me in and then began preparing his lunch. He had very few possessions and made no apologies for an unmade bed. He was quite handsome and well-dressed, I thought. He was like a lithe, feral cat that had found a good meal and a nice place to stay for the night. He watched me set up, then he ate his lunch straight out of the can. He didn't say much, but he did say that he had been in jail. So I met this couple in the lobby. I had uh, permission and blessings from the management to do this work, and that's how I would set up my appointments. I never knocked on doors and said, here, I'm here, can I take a picture? That, that would not have worked well. So I met this couple in the lobby and his shirt was unbuttoned just like you see it. I knew immediately I had to get her shirt unbuttoned to see her pregnant belly. 
I was very nervous to ask them, uh, but I did, uh, and they loved each other, and so they were truly happy to comply. For you photographers, just to show you how nervous I was, uh, if you look carefully, you'll see there's a little bit of lens flare uh, on the right side of the picture. And that's because there was light coming into the camera, which is a big no-no, but I just was nervous. So <laughs> I was young and nervous. Anyway, I love this. Sweet William was a rodeo saddle bronc rider. So he and I understood each other. We knew the game. We knew the metaphor for life. He was the boyfriend of the formerly wealthy French woman in room 333. Though he missed his wife, these two people were still so sweet together. Of course there were hotel romances. We are but human and we want to love and be accepted. Room 333, she really made her home at the St. Francis. Sweet William would visit her every afternoon. I used to go visit with them if I didn't have any sessions because they were kind of fun to be with. She didn't like Jews. That gave me something to talk about and boy, we talked about it. She didn't have a reason for her dislike other than that she was raised that way. I'd like to think in the time we spent together that I gave her a new point of view Photography and photographers can influence people. Be the best you can be and set an example for change, I say. You'll probably make a friend and learn something you never knew. Also, I'm going to talk about design a bit of doing this uh, book. So the book itself, how many people have looked at the book or have the book? Oh, so a fair number, okay. Um, well, you'll see that uh, every photograph faces a, a slightly, slightly dark modeled page. Um, this is the facsimile of construction paper divider sheets in a multo ring binder. I had seen this binder for so many years, the way it looked like, that I just couldn't imagine putting a black sheet or a gray sheet or just picking a color. So I actually uh, photographed every one of the sheets in the project, the front and the back, and that was then run on the printing press. Um, so that gives it, I mean, so that the idea was really how do we keep the authenticity of an analog project? So this is how they appear in the book. My friend, the plumber, is my idol, my mentor, my example of, of a good human being. Against so many odds, he didn't back down from living his authentic life. H how many of us have the bravery, the belief in self, the will to do this? I think that he paved the way for so many people to where we are today, which is a much higher level of acceptance of people that are, that are different than we are, that don't fit into a male-female construct. So I love the plumber. He would, he would leave in the morning uh, with tools, looking like a plumber, overalls, big muscular guy, and he would go do his work. And he would come back at the end of the day, go to his room, rest, and then six, seven o'clock, he would leave dressed like this. He would change his clothes. He, he would become she. Uh, and he would go out. I just thought he was like great. And he had beautiful clothing. The Nebraska brothers just, 
they were a delight to me. These brothers figured out how to be whole and healthy by sticking together. They had a profoundly supportive relationship. They were in awe and they seemed to have no ill will. They, they were family. So when I walked into the room, it was always the question of, well, I call it, where do you stand? Like, where do you stand in the world when you want to take a picture? How high do you want to be? And do I stand here or do I stand here? Okay, so where do you stand? So I see these two squares of light uh, and in the back of my head, now mind you, I was a student in school and I had an assignment, it was called um, flash fill, that you balanced the exterior light with the interior light by, by lighting the interior to match the exterior. So I saw that and the two guys and I thought, ooh, I can do two birds with one stone. I can, <laughs> I can fulfill my assignment at my, at my commercial photography class <laughs> and I can do this documentary portrait. So it's a really good flash fill photograph, just so you know. Uh, and, 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 I, and I would turn these in for my assignments and, and I have to say my art center instructors would like them but then they would say, what are you going to do for a living? <laughs> but I made a living, so I, I guess I did what I did, so it was good. I always thought of this as a goal that, well, this wasn't my goal, but I think he pulled it off. I can't be certain, but I heard that a few years later there was a new roller rink in Pico Rivera. I like to think that this desk clerk fulfilled his dream. It's the desire and hope that we all live for to fulfill our dreams. And he helped me. When people asked what I was all about, he told them I was okay and doing a nice photo story and that they should participate. They really helped me. The management truly helped me do this work. In room 502, I don't think I've ever encountered anyone as happy as this fellow was to be photographed as an out-of-the-closet gay man. He found his people in Hollywood. He was free. It was the moment he was waiting for. It was the moment that he dreamed of. And he was just... He, 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 he was just so happy. <laughs> so when I showed up with the camera, he just was just, he just posed, he just, he just was exuberant. I saw that big-eared puppy <laughs> and this tall set of brothers uh, and I had the shot and the caption right in my head. Um, most of the captions came to me during the session. Sometimes they came to me before the session, but I saw the people. Um, it's the way I think in word and image. Um, I would write them down each night before I went to bed. Um, and my intention is always that once we're no longer looking at this image, that you have a verbal language to attach to the visual language. And that all becomes kind of one language. Um, and, and, and these three, I mean, they were three young pups out exploring the neighborhood for sure. Okay, so it's time for a quiz. Uh, who is this person? And, and how do you know that? It's the hair. It's the hair. <laughs> yeah, any other hints? Because, now, now forget that you've seen me. How do you know it in the photograph? 
the Polaroids on the wall. That's right, the Polaroids on the wall. So that was that was the idea. It was 3.30 in the morning. I was on call 24-7 for three weeks. If somebody said yes, they would allow me to photograph them. I was, I did. So this is the writer of the inscription, room 540 in the penthouse. Um, he was so hardened, yet so sensitive. The barbarians had gotten to him, but he had found his home. He still had his heart and soul intact and his family at the St. Francis Hotel. I shall never forget his humor and his wisdom. So again, just to bring you back to, I think even though this was something I got done that I it was handed to me after I did the, all of the shooting, uh, that that inscription really became, it became what it was all about. So thinking of room 540 again, you know, he was the delicate one. He pretended he was homeless, but he knew he had a home. He had sensitivity and taste, and yes, the barbarians have also gotten to me, but not always and not forever. If the thoughts of others resonate with your intentions, learn from them. Tune out the barbarians if their thoughts make you feel bad or don't make sense to you. Every hotel needs a basement welding shop. <laughs> I, I love this image. It's, it's all there. It works. It, it's what I mean when I speak of visual literacy. He's got a lit cigarette and his lit blowtorch just screams that he has just lit his cigarette, which is a nice visual trick. It is what photography does best, which is juxtaposition and scale. So it's a nice, it's just a nice visual joke. And, and I mean, he was down there welding these giant pieces, like this thing in the back was, uh, it was huge. <laughs> and he would drag it out to the front uh, uh, sidewalk trying to sell it. I don't know if he ever did. So there's the back of the book. It became clear every, every stage that you work on a project, there's a different purpose. I mean, even for me to make this presentation for you today, well, I have to think about it in a whole different way than the publication or the sessions, the f photography sessions or the darkroom work. So everything has its own needs. Um, so it became clear as we prepared for publication, that, that, that I recount, it was important that I recount my memories of that time in history, because that's an important time in history. It was, you know, after the Vietnam War, people were just starting to kind of demand rights for, 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 for uh, you know, gay rights, uh, uh, disability rights, uh, racial inequality, uh, the 70s, and you know, people running around in, you know, long hair and, and bell bottoms and <laughs> it was a, it was a moment. It was a, a very important um, decade, I think, in our country, in our history. So, um, so Hollywood Underground is what I called all of my work uh, in Hollywood. Even today, I still do these kinds of images and with this kind of captioning because it just comes out of me. Um, so I'm, I feel blessed about that. Um, so hopes and dreams, superstitions, secrets and stories, that is the stuff of the underground. 
Also, please notice, um, so Greg Lindy, who you'll meet in a moment, and we'll be in discussion, uh, he did just a beautiful job on the back of the book. So the back of the book was no longer vintage material, so we changed the paper stock, and, and we used a different font, uh, well, a different way to set the font. Um, so I think it's just beautiful and, and, and supports the front of the book. This is a page of Greg's type. It's beautiful. There's no, there's no gaps. There's no what they call rivers. There's, there's just, it's just is a beautiful read. After the hotel, I started to work. This binder of photographs would get me work doing things that I never thought the photographs would do. So this was my very first job, job 001. I still have a job envelope for it. And this was the band, uh, Bob Dylan's backup band, the, ba the band. Um, this was the day when art directors didn't ask you to duplicate your portfolio for their job. They trusted that you would come up with something. So it was like Alexei Brodovich who would say to his disciples, including Richard Avedon and Lisette Modell and Dean Arbus, he would say, amaze me. And so I was fortunate enough to know Bob Cato, who was a, a, a protege of Alexei Brodovich, who basically said to me, you know, amaze me. He loved Yes Register, but he didn't ask me to to go duplicate that. I was nervous on this shoot. They hired me to do the job and they said, when can you be ready? And I, I thought, I mean, it was the first job, right? <laughs> Besides rodeos. And so I, uh, I said, um, I said, uh, well, three weeks. <laughs> and they said, three weeks? Uh, gee, how about next week? <laughs> I said, oh, okay, okay, I'll do it next week. I mean, this guy was from New York. He wanted it done in a New York minute. I always remember that. There was a wonderful magazine called New West that was in Los Angeles. Uh, the art director was Lloyd Ziff. And Lloyd, again, guest register, opened the door for me to do a, a story on octogenarians. And George Burns was one of the people in that story, as was Ansel Adams. Um, with George, from beginning to end of our session, he did not stop telling jokes. He had an attendant whose sole purpose during our visit was to give George freshly lit cigars. Because inelegant short cigars were forbidden. And you can kind of make sense of that. You know, you didn't want to see George Burns with a short stogie. So he had constant supply. And undoubtedly, they were Cuban. So great photographs are made from great people. You just do have to see it, and you have to have your finger on the button. Easier said than done, but maybe not so difficult. This was done for Wet Magazine. Wet Magazine was brilliant. And everybody that was anybody worked for Wet Magazine. I was fortunate to do two cover illustrations, two inside illustrations and a cover. So my idea here really was that when we're a certain age, when we're young, we want to be older. We want to have more wisdom. We want to... Um, you know, we want to do things that adults do. But when we're older, we wish that we were younger, uh, that we were more naive. Uh, so it's always looking back. You're always carrying the image of your youth as you proceed into your old age, and vice versa. Or you're dreaming of what you will be when you're an old person, when you're a young person. So that's what this is about. And this is way, way, way before any sort of digital manipulation. So I made the first photograph of the young girl with her arms up. 
um, and made a big 20 by 24 print. We went to the beach with her mother and her mother held that image and chased the daughter, chasing after youth. So then that was the photograph, that was another print. And then the final was the daughter holding that print while the mother runs. I think the hotel kind of piqued my interest in people in their bedrooms. I was and I still am interested in people in their bedrooms. The bedroom is such a sanctuary for the emotions of the soul. This couple climbed under the sheets in their pajamas, but the long sleeves didn't work so well visually. I asked them to pull the covers up high and take off their tops. I like the allusion to a secret that might have occurred. It starts with trust in the first place and a willingness on everybody's part to allow whatever will happen to happen. The title of this photograph is Coming Out of the Closet. <laughs> it is my dear friend, Joe Henry, and his husband, Stanley Gordon. Joe was the vice president of Art Center and president of Art Center Switzerland. And today, I really dedicate to Joe Henry because Joe Henry believed in me and he supported me. He found my first publishing agent that was Art Linkletter's publishing agent. Uh, so there I was, 21 years old, and Art Linkletter's rep was repping Penny Wallen. <laughs> so, uh, but they didn't, nobody published it. They didn't publish it at that time. Um, but we continued to be friends through the years, um, and he passed away a few years ago, but he was just terrific. And they were, they were so happy to do this photograph. They uh, discovered each other later in their lives and were just, they were just smitten. <laughs> Let's bring our panel aboard. My collaborators have joined us today to, to talk about the heart and the soul and the production details of the books. So this handsome man here is Barry Munger. Uh, where's my, there we go. Hey! <laughs> so Barry is a uh, native Los Angeles boy who understands the Hollywood dream. When he discovered Guest Register in its original unpublished form, we were in the south of France and he became my greatest collaborator. He has produced two beautifully written and edited books on his own and is a terrific photographer working primarily with film. He has an encyclopedic knowledge of the art and craft of photography and he knows a beautiful silver print when he sees one. So Barry, thank you for being here today. I am so happy to be here. Yes. Greg, Greg Lindy. So before Greg, I, I judge design time before Greg and after Greg. So before Greg, every expert I encountered with the question of how to preserve the authenticity of the typography that needed to be changed because there were typos in it and I did not want to go to press with typos in the typography. Do you understand, let me see, let me digress for a moment. Um, uh, all the text you see underneath the photographs were, photo were, were put there from another and larger. So they're part of the original silver print. And all the pictures you saw are scans of the original silver print. So some of that text, which was printed with light onto the photo paper, there were typos and I needed to correct them but I needed to preserve the, there's a funky quality to the type, right? Well, it just was, I don't know why, but it just was, and it was a consistent quality. It wasn't perfect like the computer. Okay, so before Greg, everybody, every expert that I encountered with the question of how to preserve the authenticity of this typography that needed to be changed, 
they all gave me the same answer, which was, use a computer and no one will know the difference. But I knew the difference. I'm, well, I'm not chopped liver. So, um, so it was a question, it was really, they, they gave me the answer because it was a question of the amount of work that would be involved to do it correctly. But hey, you know, some things take work. So I talked to Greg. So Greg is the two, the, the real typographic expert. And he approved of my plan to scan all of the existing type negatives and create uh, an alphabet. We'll see it. Um, and once we had the necessary characters in place, he optimized them to their original state of imperfection to match the rest of the typography. It wasn't perfect to begin with, and we liked it the way it was. Divider page. Why did we do things, and how did we do them? This is an actual divider page, 47 years later, a bit deteriorated, and a whole lot beautiful. And so these I photographed. So that's so the why. Why did I want to do it? Because it's beautiful, and it's part of the history of the object. And how did I do it? I photographed him. <laughs> so I actually did, I, I, you know, I, 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 would, I had a, a, a separation house. Uh, they started to separate the prints, and they kept making everything straight and perfect. And I said, no, no, it wasn't straight and perfect. So I ended up making all of the captures, separations, for every page of the book. Um, uh, and, uh, and it was printed in Italy by a brilliant printer, so he, he took those and made them, you know, beautiful. Okay. Greg, you can talk a bit about this. I wanted no typographic errors, as I said, so we scanned the original lithos and we made the alphabet. You can see here on the left side is, is our alphabet. And we were only missing one character. We didn't have a J. Well, we couldn't. There's a fellow that says, I got Jesus, <laughs> and everything's all right. So we couldn't do the G, the J for Jesus. So we had to make a J, but we did. Uh, it's there. So this is a digital file, and we could grab any character we wanted to and make a line of new type. Notice kind of the look on the top of the first room 215 and you'll see that the quotation marks are inside the period and that his television television shouldn't be capitalized right so they were things like that but that matters so then we changed them we had to reset this and his television is lowercase and the the Quotation mark covers the entire sentence. Greg. Yeah, thank you. So as, as Penny was saying, um, you know, uh, Penny and her, her studio uh, did, did a lot of the heavy work by getting all of these assets in place and whatnot. And then, you know, I I just carried over kind of my, my, what my, my, earlier original uh, education to type was to you know hand set and and go in there and um, essentially just play tailor and kind of look at what already was there uh, that was um, typeset 48 years ago and um, go in there and, and try to see the rhythm see the imperfection see see the space in between see the see the crashes, see all the imperfections and, and warmth and carry that over into the new settings or to the fixes that we needed to do, um, which kind of goes counter to a lot of like what we aspire to do, especially with like digital typography of, well, let's fix the spacing, let's fix the, the, the crashes, let's fix all those things. But um, in this case, all of that was integral to to the art, you know, because the, the, the caption, the type was part of that art with the photo. And we needed to, we needed to, you know, honor that and extend that and, you know, accommodate that. Um, so. 
so the type was the first thing really that we kind of had to wake up to this idea about i mean h how does one how how does one preserve that which was a vision in the analog age and and, sh and is it necessary well those of us that work with analog materials yes it's necessary i mean i think a lot of problems in cre in, in 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 understanding creativity these days or how to do something people don't get their hands on the materials they are only on a keyboard in front of a computer monitor and that's not enough tactility <laughs> so so that's i think you know that's where the type that's where all many of these things come in that we're going to talk about so how, how does one preserve that how does one fight for that we have to fight for that I mean, I'm sorry to say I let a number of people go because they didn't want to preserve that. They they wanted to make it like new and shiny. Can I add something, Penny? Yes. Uh, sorry, um, since we're kind of discussing. Um, I think to one of those facts is that, you know, how do you how do you get in touch with that? How do you how do you do that with today's tools? And you know, how we obviously we we ended up in Photoshop and you know, which is incredible and it's efficient but we really we really took the the kind of the working methods especially what how I learned of what you do on a paste up board what you do on a drafting board and just kind of say instead of doing it here we're doing it here and taking that idea and I think a lot of the challenges was uh, were were that you know the the designers that were were, were working with Penny they didn't yeah I mean they don't even know what this is uh, you know, it's it's so antiquated and whatnot. Um, and by not having that, having that connection, it's 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 really. I mean, it's not fair to expect them to think about how to approach this any other way um, other than what they've learned. And so, um, yeah, yeah. So. so there. So it's anyway. It's up to people that understand it to to continue to teach it. I think this was. Another kind of challenge was the back of the book and what were we going to do typographically. So we went through lots of different fonts and nothing sort of made sense. And then we ended up actually using the same typeface as the front of the book, but now, it's, now it is computer set. I just think it's, it's, so, it's so lovely. The back of the book is so readable and, and just so warm and... It's the right line length and the right picture size, and Greg just did a great job. It, it's um, yeah. It, it, this where we end up here. It looks so. It's so resolved. It, it's so effortless. But how we got there was 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 quite a bit of effort. And I, I think any experienced typographer would fully understand that. And you know, really, just the. The, the considerations around point size, around letting, around column width, all of these, you know, and, and you know, Penny was great to collaborate on this because, um, you know, being, being in type and being a typographer, type designer, detail, 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 and Penny is so detail-oriented, uh, you know, we could really, you know, it was, it was actually quite fun to kind of, kind of, uh, debate well could this go a quarter point bigger could this go <laughs> this and, and you know any other person would be like you got to be kidding me really um but with with the two of us who was like oh yeah let's see what that looks like and you know and and you know and and honest and and we'd have we'd have our uh, our progress we'd have our how we got there and then we'd look at all of them and again probably most people be like huh what's the difference between these seven ones and we'd be like no, we can see it. We can feel it. You know, we, it, because at that point, yeah, you just you just feel it. And and then you know, I think we've kind of had this kind of one thing we were talking about a, lot, a couple of weeks ago is like it took us like twelve go arounds to get here, but it was like lucky number thirteen where it just it just locked in. You know, it, it was what it was, and it and it just again it looks like which I think is the intention is that it's, it's really simple it took easy, it was really easy to get to but it it 
wasn't, you know, so. It was good. Yeah, good collaboration. And we made hard copy. We didn't make judgments. You cannot make type judgments on the screen. You must print out. Okay, so here's a Barry and Penny <laughs> uh, uh, collaboration. So, so I sort of call this, you know, the cowgirl leather and the gold lame. So there's the problems and the solutions. When we were coming up with the cover of the book and, and how I wanted to do it, I mean, I just, I just thought of an old hotel ledger. And old hotel ledgers always had leather corners and maybe a leather spine. Well... That would have doubled the cost of the book. So are you kidding me? That's what it costs to, to do that now? So, so no more leather co co uh, corners or spines. But I still, uh, you know, I got my roots in this leather, you see. And so I still wanted, so I said, well, what about just the, the label being leather? And that was good. And then we didn't have a material that we liked. And then one day some bindery supply place sent me this piece of like pebbled textured like I just it's like gold lame and I went that's it that's it that's it I'm in um, but there were problems with it uh, so first of all you see this you see how it's uh, uh, there's a rebate all the way around it well the rebate was really giving the bindery fits because they had to use two boards and sync the lab label into the board. And it, the rebate was just problematic. And so everybody was like, they didn't think I could pull it off. And, and it, the printer was pulling his hair out. And Barry was wondering, mm, I don't know about this, right? Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> and um, I think that was my role pretty much all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, my role was like this, wait, I think we can. It, so, so when I got to the press, the first thing we did was they handed me this sample at the top, and it was too proud. It sat proud. It wouldn't have ever slid, slid into a bookshelf, uh, and it was a mess. And I just took a piece of leather, and I said, well, why don't we just make the hole smaller, and then there's no, there's no problem. And bingo. Then it worked. So it was just a matter of fresh eyes, my fresh eyes, my determined fresh eyes, uh, uh, to, to say that. And the printer said, oh, well, OK, all right, let's get a sample back tomorrow. So it came in the next day. The bindery made that second sample. Done. And look at how much more elegant it is. So, Barry, do you have any thoughts about the cover? Uh, well, I mean, in, in terms of all the physical aspects of the book, uh, in terms of initially, I, I, I thought the book should be smaller than it is. I thought the book should be, I, I think, more tasteful, more conventional. I mean, I wouldn't have set, put it that way, uh, but um, and, and mainly for functional reasons. Uh, for example, when you get to a 14-inch trim size, you're in the oversized section of the bookstore usually. Um, you may not fit on the shelf. It's a shipping issue. So that there, it really wasn't an aesthetic judgment. I had nothing against an 11 by 14 book, per se. It was just sort of functional things. And I want you to say that my functional um, arguments fell on deaf ears. Because <laughs> if you haven't noticed, Penny uh, is a, a, a really determined individual who has a really strong vision. And so she wanted what she wanted, and she got it, and it was kind of bringing me along for the ride. So I don't know why, I, I don't know why I'm up here exactly, because <laughs> if, 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 if I had actually had an effect on Penny, the book would be really quite different. Uh, so. Okay, okay, now wait a minute. I, I just have to interrupt here. So, like, we're deciding, you know, 9 by 12, 11 by 14. 11 by 14 is the size of the original whole thing. And I get a, I get a little box in the mail one day. And what is it? It's a book. It's an 11 by 14 book that Richard Avedon did that Barry sends me to show me an 11 by 14 book. He opened Pandora's box because I went, this is it. <laughs> it. It was part of a conversation we were having about how much to maintain the historic artifact, which was her portfolio. And, and, and uh, these ring binders, I'm, we're at Art Center. I'm assuming everyone knows what they are. The Mylar sheet, 
the the black substrate the we all know what an artist portfolio looks like right i mean that was the ur object and what i didn't understand was that penny thought that the finished work was basically as close as we could get to the ur object and i had always thought that it was going to be translated for a contemporary audience in other words it would have an aura of its origination but it was going to need to meet the audience midway and these, this did not meet the audience midway. This, this is really kind of a pennies putting a spin to sort of make the Ur object just available in book form. You know, if, I think if she, if she could have just made her portfolio available, I, I, think, she might have, <laughs> I think she might have done that. Uh, uh, and so um, when she says gold lame, that was really the first time that I even understood what she, the attraction of the, of the fabric that she selected. I, I didn't understand that she was going for Hollywood. I mean, I, I know that sounds crazy, but I, it, t it took me a while to sort of say, oh, I, I see now I see what she's going for. This is leather and gold lame. That is Hollywood in the 1970s. I, I was just surprised. You want that on your book? I was thinking like Steidel, you know, Buckram. Like I wasn't thinking gold lame. But the book is so much more distinctive and unusual and, dare I say, Penny-like, uh, because of Penny's insistence uh, that it be done in a particular way. Well, and I, I know it sounds like it's insistence, but let me tell you, I had a 21-year-old photographer that made me do what I did, right? I needed to honor the vision of that 21-year-old because she had a vision of what it should be. And I just did its bidding. I mean, I believe that. I, like, I'd see something like, oh man, they had the most like prep school bindery fabric at one point, you know, and, and it, it, with this leather label that wasn't figured out right. And I just went, that's not what Hollywood is. You know, that's, that's not gold lame and leather. <laughs> bell bottoms and sideburns that was sort of like you know prep school or something and so and, and it's not that I didn't meet the audience halfway but I think that my job is to it, 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 you have to find the bones of what you're doing and you have to listen to what you're doing and if it, what if what I'm doing is telling me to do something because I have my hands on it I'm not just looking on a monitor then, then I need to follow that. And that's what creating art is. That's what being creative is. It's, it's not redoing what Steidel has done how many times with a f different color palette. Like, I didn't want to go near that. <laughs> and so, you didn't. It, well, and, uh, yeah. And so, uh, I'm so I'm I'm just like I love I love this book and I and I also here's another great thing you know if you've, you've all felt it or half of some of you have it's really solid it's like a brick even though it's small well that happened by having to make the boards there's two boards glued together to accommodate the thickness of the label so when you do that I mean you know if you want to buy one of these books and then you have a weapon to go home with, right? It's just like, it's not bending. <laughs> and I like that, I have to say. So, um, so, so these things that we're talking about, these, these, are, these are my, they're my greatest collaborators, right? We collaborated, we listened, we cajoled, we, we pushed, we retreated. It was the process of creating. So, thank you. Thank you both for that. This was out of the hotel register. I wanted that to be the end sheets, and I thought it needed to be there so you knew where the inscription came from. Okay, my favorite word with books is didactic. It took me decades to figure out the meaning, but your book, you sh your book needs to teach the reader how to read it very quickly so that you're not struggling with how to read it. You just go into the message. 
So we, the aspect ratio of the ledger that, that room 540 gave to me isn't 11 by 14. We struggled, we, we cropped it, we, ugh, we did all sorts of silly stuff. But in the end, we just put it in the sheets. You know, we tried to bleed it, whatever, right? Well, we just let it be where it is, exactly size, and let this be a dropped out background. I shot it with sheets, I shot it in raking light, I shot it, eight, I shot it 10 times. I have 10 different variations. That was the one, okay. Uh, right? We really struggled with that, but we, but, but just keep struggling. That's all you can do. You can't be defeated. You can't say, oh, it's good enough. It's not good enough. It has to be better. <laughs> um, and then the back of the book to remind you that there's always a place. There's always a place for you. Be yourself, you will have a place. So this was, again, part of the process, which was marketing the book. Just thrilled, just so honored that the New York Times ran a, a review in the New York Times book review section. So, uh, gosh, you know, I guess it kind of worked to choose Golemay and leather. <laughs> so, uh, Anyway, all right. So, so each of you, you know, collaborated with me in my 21-year-old self. Uh, do you have any thoughts or scenarios that you would like to impart to the audience? I promise you can say whatever you want. Well, I think when when you we first got together, you know, it wasn't about design of the book. It was you, you had this this challenge with the type, and and you know, I think you know talked on the phone I'm like okay that sounds pretty cool and then okay so let's meet and then you know walk in and you're you're you're, you're showing me what what the what that problem is that we need to solve and what it's for and then I think I immediately like fell in love with the project and this thing has its own its own course it's it's it has to come to be right and we did that and then and then you Six months later, we, we we come back in, and now it's it's about the rest of the book and what needs to happen there. And I really looked at it as that, you know, my my design involvement is going to really be about just what what can I do to make this just happen, you know? Because because I loved it, you know, and 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 a lot of it was like knowing when to stand out of the way, knowing when to kind of insert myself, you know, kind of which was a, a little bit different than most of the design jobs I've ever experienced. Um, so, so, Greg, I want to just say one thing, it, it, which, was, uh, which was a good collaboration point from you, which was <clears throat> Greg really didn't want to take credit as the graphic designer uh, because he felt like I had designed it 47 years ago. Um, and that was pretty right, really. I had to realize, yes, I mean, I know you know, I, I mean, there's no way that I really, I, I understood what, what the look of the back of the book was, but, but that's totally, it's typographic and image is way beyond my capability. But when I, but the, the, the front part of the book was, was designed and not to be, it was only to be preserved, not to be changed. Um, so I appreciate that. Yeah. And like, yeah. What, like what Barry was saying about your vision, it's like, um, you know, and I, I think this also requires like a mature, a more mature designer to be involved is to say, Penny has this particular vision here. I love it. What can I do? It's an honor to be involved in here. How can we, what, what is it that I can do to, to get it to become a, get, get over the finish line and become a reality, you know? And I think. So Barry, what, where are you on, on this? So there's a very funny to me uh, section in the book where Penny's talking about how she worked when she was doing guest register in the hotel. And she says, I made sure to have an assistant with me 
uh, for my own safety and to move the equipment. That's not the line I thought was funny. The, next, the line I thought was funny is the next line. She says, usually that person was one of the subjects that I had befriended along the way, something along those lines. And that is just pure penny. I mean, so <laughs> I, I'm thinking when I read this, I'm thinking, okay, they move heavy objects, they stand in the room while you do your work, and then they move the heavy stuff back to wherever you want it or the next shoot or whatever. And they think that's fun. That is Penny. That is Penny. So I don't know how I got so involved in this project. I loved the project. I, I am, uh, I, I, Guest Ranger has many fans, but I, I, I don't know if there are many people who have spent as long uh, looking at it other than Penny and maybe Greg. Um, and uh, I, it just spoke to me in so many different ways. And I think it's not just me. I really would like to proselytize for the book because I think it's a really important piece of California photography. Uh, uh, and I think it should be in a museum. Uh, I think we should have an exhibition of it in its entirety. I'm delighted that the book is out. Um, and so anything that I can do to help people see Guest Register and appreciate Guest Register, I am on board. Well, thank you. We'll get you to work doing that. <laughs> <laughs> he already did. I'm always going, could you find, the, you know, we, we're kind of still trying to find some of the people in the project to see if they're alive. I would love to connect. So we, we think that maybe the, 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 the Nebraska brothers are still alive. The names and so forth are there, but the phone numbers just fell off the radar. But uh, it takes a village. I think the trade-off is, you know, like people coming and helping me with heavy equipment and then standing there while I do the shoot. Well, they're part of that shoot, and they watch that shoot. I mean, then I've had assistants, paid assistants, just b we leave a shoot, and they just, they're just speechless. I mean, because... It's it's performance art. My shoots are kind of perform. I mean, there's something that happens. Uh, I think it's true for many photographers, not just me. But does anybody have questions of any of us? What was the original font used in the registry that you had to work with? It, it's universe. It's universe, and it was set at Art Center, I think, which is why it's kind of so little funky. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a very funky cut, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, and that's probably when I said Universe 65, I could see Ramon in your face like, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's um, yeah, photo photo typesetting. I mean, it's all dependent upon who's who's pushing the buttons that day too. <laughs> so, you know. Um. Any other questions? Yes. I'll bring the mic around for people. Yeah. Penny, congratulations on the, the book and <clears throat> going back almost a half a century to bring a, one of your original projects to life. I have two questions about context. Um, how did a 21-year-old Penny Wollen end up at the St. Francis? Why that hotel? And then photographically, um, is, can you describe the, the camera, the light, how many rolls of film would you shoot? Did you move objects in the room? Um, what, what, was, what was a typical shoot like? Uh, so Penny ended up in that hotel. Uh, I had a project, a documentary project. Uh, Mr. Jim Cacavo, who's sitting here, and you should talk to him later. Uh, 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 so it was an assignment that I had to do to document something. And um, so I went to uh, work with a model uh, that was living at the hotel. The model said, you ought to come see this hotel I'm in. It's really interesting. So I went to the hotel, and it was interesting. I thought, well, I'll just do this. And so there, I had my hotel, and I had my assignment. Uh, what was it like? Um, I didn't have, I was a student, you know, I was partially paying for my way through college, so everybody had one roll of film. Uh, I shot with a Hasselblad, and I still love to shoot with a Hasselblad. It is the brick that takes pictures. Uh, and I had a strobe, and oftentimes I would bounce a strobe off of the ceiling, and then 
have a strobe for direction on the person so that you can balance, you can always balance. If you're working with two lights, you, the, the world is your oyster. So that's what I did. I shot Polaroid and then, and then I ran and processed the film and, and then I wrote the text and, and then I would, I would get the text set, you know, maybe just five, five of the things because I knew that I, I knew I had a deadline. I mean, I had to keep it. I had to keep it moving. So but that it taught me how to work. That's for sure. My my question is: Over what period of time were all of the photos at the hotel taken, and is the hotel still standing? Uh, I did that over three weeks, and the hotel is standing. Uh, and it is a it is a gentrified reincarnation uh, called the Gershwin. Same location, same building. Uh, but now it's several thousand a month for one of these rooms. And by the way, this was built in the 20s, heyday of the silent film. It was a very nice hotel. And one of its attributes was that it had a bathroom in every room. Um, Penny, uh, did, you t did you turn um, the assignment in? Sure. <laughs> what, what grade did you get? I, you better have given me an A+. <laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> I think I got it. I think I got an A. And he gave me another job afterwards. He gave me a job to sneak into Howard Hughes's compound <laughs> and photograph there. He didn't tell me to sneak in, but how else was I going to do it? So, yeah. Yeah, I got an A. And Joe Henry hung the photographs up in the hallway of Third Street. I mean, our center really liked it. Hi, Penny. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you for joining this program for us. Um, I want to say that I, I'm really excited that you, the inclusion of, um, uh, you know, the, the guy in room 323, the plumber and the electrician, and, and also the, the representation of gay people in, because... You know, diversity, equity, inclusion is so important to the mission of Art Center that we do today. And so to see some, a project that was done in the 70s come back is very important to us. So thank you for that inclusion. Um, so yeah, I just want to thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, you know, the, uh, there, there was, um, Barry and I talk about this, you know, there's er everybody's there, right? I mean... They're black, they're gay, they're cowgirls, they have educations, they don't have educations. They're hustlers, they're prostitutes. Uh, they're, they're, they're set designers that studied at uh, Stanford. I mean, it is, it is the micro of the macro of humanity. And, they're, and, and the range of emotions is, is also they're happy, they're sad, they're successful, they're not, they're up, they're down. They're us. They're not low life. I, I would also point out just as a something you may not notice the first time you look at guest registers, it's all of what people have said. Uh, it's sort of like a, 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 an arc of a kind. And, uh, and as the pictures unfold, the transitions always feel great. You know, we start with the empty room and the stuntman who's died. The very next picture, that's the darkest picture in the book. The very next picture is the, is the Jesus uh, is just all right guy. And he's probably the warmest and sweetest of all the pictures. And it all kind of unfolds. The genders mix. The, the, we have a group. We have an independent. We have light. We have dark. And we, we, we go all the way to the end, and we have the welder. And the welder is just this wonderful character. And then behind the welder is this black spirit figure, I would say. He looks like a holy man who has his arms open. And it really feels like an ending. It really feels right. It feels like a period. And I always thought that Penny had edited this book uh, <laughs> such that she had sequenced it. Because I'm a photographer, and it's really, really hard to sequence photographs. And I spent a lot of time doing it, and anyone who's ever done it knows that it's really difficult. And when I realized that this book was organized by room number, <laughs> wait for it, people, room number, they unfold floor to floor. If they're more than one apartment on a floor, it's the lowest number first. 
Then we go to the store, and then we go to the welder in the basement. That's the organization. This is a miracle. That is like, that is like a magician with doing one of those tricks where they start with a normal deck of cards, they shuffle it, and then suddenly it's back in the deck order. Or really, it's more like someone took a deck of cards, threw it in the air, and then it, it was a house of cards. It's, it's that amazing. And I got to tell, I had to ask a question. It's like, when did, you decide, when did you realize that you could organize the book that way? And were you amazed that you could do it? Because it's a miracle. Well, first of all, I think guest register is a miracle. And I think I was a medium. I don't know that my talent exactly came into it. I guess it did. But it was a, like, this stuff was just coming at me 24-7 for a month. <laughs> and, and it was answering all the questions that I had. Right? Like, who lives in these hotels? And, and why does, when I walk past a hotel with my father when I was a little kid, uh, we'd go to the bad side of town and, and we'd go past one of these hotels and he'd hold my hand just a little bit tighter. He just was a little bit more protective. Why? What are we so afraid of? So I think Guest Register is a miracle. In terms of, 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 of um, pacing it, I, I think I remember, you know, like, okay, you know, sticking them up on the wall and you saw the Polaroids. Well, it looks weird if I would have started the room 540 and, oh, this is 333 and the next one is 120. I mean, it seems like you had to just kind of go from floor to floor, right? Like, I'm the cleaning crew. <laughs> <laughs> This one, this the people one. in this room probably never noticed that it was. Or I didn't. I looked at the book a dozen times before I noticed. Oh, th that's how it was paced. Yeah. Well, that that made sense to me. Doesn't it make sense to you? Yeah. I mean, I just work here, right? So, <laughs> oh, let's take care of the first floor. Okay, now we're at the second floor. It didn't happen that way because the people came to me as they came to me wherever they lived. But uh, but that's that was the pacing. So yeah, it it was a, it's just a miracle that it works. Are there any last questions? We're we're over time, but uh, I think we probably do one more question. <laughs> oh my gosh, who? <laughs> Everyone's pointing to. Uh, hold on one second. No. She asked if there are outtakes. No, I I found something sort of interesting when I went through. As I got ready to publish, I thought, let me look again and see if there's anything I want to add. I did add a couple of images. Uh, the, um, the, 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 the uh, grocery store patron uh, I added. And I actually added um, um, Sweet William. That was there. And I must not have thought it was strong enough at that time. But I realized that it showed the connection of people in the hotel. Uh, yeah. But in terms of do, do I th did I choose more than one image from a from a session? Uh, no, because you know I was 21 years old and and a you know I'm going to live forever and so we don't need to make a lot of prints and b um, you pick the best one. You you you're in you got to go to the deserted island. You can't pick two from the same session. You pick the, you find the best one. I think I still live that way. I understand that. I was wondering if there were other rooms that did not make the cut. Oh, very, yeah, ve I think there was two that didn't make the cut. So everything, I, I feel very um, beholden in a way to my subjects. They've really given me a piece of their life, and so I better be good enough to include them. That's my little mantra. So really, really to speak of, no. It's, it's everything I did. Yes. Well, I think we're going to probably end it here, but we, are, we do have a reception upstairs again. So feel free to, to chat with Penny up there. But thank you so you much, Penny. For one well, well, just one second. There okay. seemed to be one last question. Okay. Uh, I just, I could ask you upstairs. Too, oh. I wondered, uh, what was it like for the printers to deal with you on <laughs> they love me. I won the award. I won the award. Tell them, Barry. I won. <laughs>
it was another one of those things where where Penny uh, did her did her magic. Uh, I don't know whether she <laughs> baked them all cookies or what she did, but uh, <laughs> they Trifolio Press, where it was printed, has a has a competition every year for the photo book of the year, but most of the people who vote, or a lot of the people who vote anyway, work at Trifolio Press. And uh, I think Penny did really, really well with <laughs> the employees. I, in any case, she won the book of the year, and they do beautiful books there, and there was heavy competition uh, from you know, major artists and... Uh, from the Whitney, from the Museum of Modern yeah. Art, and they voted unanimously for Guest Register as the best book they printed all year. 